Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Say, do you know the breakfast that's a favorite with so many top action Hollywood movie stars? It's this breakfast. It's nourishing, swell tasting Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat with milk or cream and fruit. These king size, ready to serve premium grains of rice or wheat pack a double barrel taste wallop. They're good for you. They're shot from guns. Yes, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender. Tomorrow, sure, enjoy this breakfast treat. Eat the one and only delicious, nutritious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Sergeant Preston urged his team along the trail to Crystal Falls. On King! On you, Huskies! King was working as a loose lead, clearing the way for the other dogs through the drifted snow. There was a tumble-down trapper's cabin to the left of the trail, and since the wind was blowing toward it, King caught no scent of a human being. He had no premonition of danger until he saw the rifle barrel stuck through the open window. He barked his alarm, and at that same instant, the rifle spoke. Sergeant dropped to the ground. King raced toward the cabin. Another bullet hit him. The great dog went down in his tracks. A man opened the door of the cabin and ran out to the team. After a struggle, he managed to get them turned around and, jumping on the sled, drove off in the same direction from which the sergeant had come. Listen! It began to snow. King raised his head and started to crawl back to his master. He reached his side tried to lick his hand, and then lost consciousness once more. The snow covered the two still bodies. It was only ten minutes later that Constable Jim Downey drove down the trail from Crystal Falls. John Day, the manager of the Crystal Falls Mining Company, rode his sled, a rifle ready in the crook of his arm. Jim! Somebody lying on the trail! man and a dog. That man's too big for any of the three who held up the office. Great Scott. Sergeant Preston and King. Sergeant Preston and King? Are they dead, Jim? No. I can hear the sergeant's heartbeat and King's breathing. Must have been one of those crooks that shot him. We need more than first aid. We'll have to get them to the town as fast as we can. Sergeant Preston and King were taken back to Crystal Falls and placed under the doctor's care. Constable Downey, determined to pick up the trail of the man or men who had shot them, started out once more. He made a thorough search of the district for nearly two weeks, but could find no trace of the bank robbers. Then, being close to Dawson, he drove into headquarters to report the sergeant's casualty and the robbery. While he was talking with Inspector Conrad, a young man entered the building. That was two weeks ago. Sergeant may be better, may be worse. May even be. Uh, just a second. Yes? Are you Inspector Conrad? I am. My name's Tom Garrison. I want to give myself up. Garrison? I don't know the name, but... No, but you probably have my description by now. I'm one of the men who held up the Crystal Falls Mining Company. What about it, Jim? Say, he does answer the description of one of them. 
Light curly hair, right build. Tom Garrison, huh? That's my name. Where's the gold? I don't know. We split up after the robbery. One of the others took it. Who are they? I don't know their last names. We only met the night before. They call themselves Frenchie and Brad. Where are they now? I don't know. Now, look, Tom. If you expect any leniency, you have to do more than just give yourself up. Now, one of your pals shot a man in making his getaway. This could be a murder charge. And if you try to protect him in any way, I'm not. I'm the man you're talking about. I shot the sergeant. Uh, Why, are you... Easy, Jim. I'll take charge of this. You want to make a full confession? I already have. I took part in the robbery. I shot the sergeant because I needed his team to make my getaway. Don't know where the other two are. Don't know where the gold is. Giving myself up. That's all. You're wrong, Garrison. There may be a noose around your neck before you're finished. Take him into my office, Jim. We'll get a statement there. Tom Garrison signed a full confession, but continued to deny any knowledge of where the stolen gold or his confederates were. Where have you been during the past two weeks, Garrison? Hiding out in the woods. What made you surrender? I had no place to go. I knew I'd be caught sooner or later. What else was there to do? Your first attempt at robbery? Yes. What did you do with the sergeant's team? They're in the run back of the Palace Hotel. Sled's there, too. I think that's all, Jim. You can lock him up. Yes, sir. Come on, Garrison. Tom Garrison was locked up, but he was never charged with murder. John Day drove into Dawson that night, and on his sled were the sergeant and king. When they walked into headquarters, there was a noisy celebration. Hi, Sergeant, you're looking great. Easy, Jim, easy. I'm a sick man. Hello, King. Good boy. And don't pick on King, either. You don't look as if you've been seriously wounded, Sergeant. You should have seen him two weeks ago. Both he and King made a wonderful recovery. I feel fine now. I'm ready to go back to work, Inspector. Not a chance, Sergeant. I should say not. Crystal Falls' case is the only one we have in the books. I'm going out after the other two tomorrow. Other two? Oh, that's right. Couldn't have heard. We have one of them locked up. The one who shot the sergeant. Oh, huh? have? You'd better go back in the jail and have a look at him, Why, sir. Why, uh, I can't identify him, sir. Well, I can if he's one of the three men who walked into my office. You don't have to identify him. There's no credit to me in his capture. He just walked in, gave himself up. He did? Well, you're no more surprised than we were. But if it hadn't been for Jim and Mr. Day, he left King and me to die, Inspector. He must have thought he was facing a murder charge. Gave himself up. An attack of conscience, I imagine. He's young. He has no record of any kind. The old story. Came up here to make his fortune. He didn't. He fell in with bad companions, and it's easy to believe that they persuaded him to take part in the holdup. As for him shooting you, could have been sheer panic. Inspector, I'd like to see him. Of course. Come along. I have the keys. Come on, King. <laughs> down this way. Stand up, Garrison. What do you want? Someone to see you. There's no one here who... Oh, the sergeant. He's the one. Yes. It's no thanks to you. He's recovered. Don't you remember me? I'm the one you robbed. I, I remember you now. You're sure this is the man, Mr. Day? I'm positive he's one of them. Any questions you want to ask him, Sergeant? The two men who held up the office with you, Garrison, what were their names? Brad and Frenchie. Where'd you meet them? Roadhouse near Crystal Falls. Whose roadhouse? They called the owner Mac. I know the place. Who took the money? Frenchie. Where were you supposed to meet him? Right here in Dawson. That's the first time you said that. Doesn't sound likely to me. They... We figured with so many people pouring in here, we wouldn't be noticed. So you came into Dawson to meet your friends? No, it was to be later. They'll find out I've given myself up. They won't be coming here now. I think you're hiding something. I don't know where they are. I swear it. We'll find them, mister. You can be sure of that. Let's go, Jim. If you don't mind, I'd like to get a little rest. Right, Sergeant. You should have gone straight to bed. Are you sure you're all right? The sergeant was tired after the trip from Crystal Falls, but he didn't go to sleep but once that night. King, who was stretched out beside his bed, sensed his wakefulness. <laughs> oh, go to sleep, boy. There's nothing wrong. Just that I can't help thinking. John Day identified the prisoner, but you didn't. Could it be that he shot you before you caught his scent? <laughs> I suppose that must be it. This is one of the times I wish you could talk, King. Well, go to sleep, boy. You need rest just as much as I do. 
Two days later, King and the sergeant were alone in the outer office at headquarters. The door opened and a girl came in. Are you in charge here? Temporarily. Sergeant Preston, at your service. My name is Sue Devon. I've just arrived and I heard some talk at the hotel. Do you have a prisoner here by the name of Tom Garrison? Yes, we do. May I see him? I'm engaged to his brother, Ted. Oh, I see. Well, I can't think of any reason why you shouldn't talk with him. Follow me. The sergeant led the way to the jail and unlocked the door. Just wait here a moment, please. Very well. You have a visitor, Garrison. What? Who? Her name is Sue Devon. No. No, I won't see her. I won't talk to her. You can't make me. Tom, you can't make me believe you've done this thing. Get her out of here. Get her out. We'll continue our story in just a moment. You know, fellas and girls, it's getting mighty chilly some of these mornings, and I was thinking that... Say, matter of fact, it's getting chilly in here right now, but fast. Good heavens, look who just blew in. Golly, he's a sprightly-looking little fellow with pointed cap and shoes and... Say, you wouldn't be Jack Frost, would you? That's me. Jack Frost, in person. Oh, so you're the fellow that paints the frost on windows, huh? Right. Now ask me what I'm doing here. Well, I am curious. Had an idea about Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Oh, you're interested in the breakfast cereal shot from gun. You bet I am. I eat a big bowlful every morning, winter, summer, the year round. Say, Jack, you must go for wheat or rice shot from gun. Nothing better. Good for you, too. Especially for a busy fella like me. You mean because Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are nourishing and furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Right. Say, uh, what was that idea of yours? It's simple. On cold mornings, boys and girls might ask Mom to pop their Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice into the oven and heat just for a jiffy. Oh. And then maybe pour on some hot milk. Say, that's a real easy to fix warmer upper breakfast treat and different. Why don't you fellas and girls try it real soon on a chilly morning? And don't forget, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are shot from gun. To make them crisp and tender. Yes, these king size premium grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. Ask mom right now to order Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Wheat and rice shot from guns comes only in the big red and blue packages. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, the one and only Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Now to continue our story. When Tom Garrison refused to talk with Sue Devon, the girl ran down the corridor between the cells to the sergeant's side. Tom, you've got to tell the truth. You're not guilty. I am. I signed a full confession. Do you know why I came up here to the Yukon? Of course. To marry Ted. Well, go ahead. There's nothing to stop you. Where is he, Tom? I don't know. I haven't seen him for six months. Now, will you get out of here? Yes. Yes, I will. The sergeant and King followed the girl out of the cell block. Back in the office, Sue had her hand on the handle of the outer door when the sergeant stopped her. Just a moment, please. Why don't you think that Tom Garrison took part in this robbery? I have no reason, sergeant, except that I've known him all my life. You came up here to marry his brother? Oh, we've been engaged for some time. We were going to be married last summer, but, well, Ted wanted to try his luck at finding gold. You came all the way up here, and you don't know where to find him. I'll find him. Won't you let me help you? I don't need any help, sergeant. Thank you. Uh, how long will it be before Tom is brought to trial? Well, Judge Brock's at White Pass. He'll be back in another two weeks. And Tom will plead guilty and be sentenced. That's the way it looks now. Well, I'll be back in less than two weeks. Goodbye, Sergeant. Goodbye. Mysterious, isn't she, King? 
Well, we've been fairly successful at solving mysteries. I think you've given me the clue to this one, boy. <laughs> King and the sergeant made a tour of the town late that afternoon. When they returned to headquarters, the sergeant went straight to the inspector's office. Hello, sergeant. Well, King, have a good walk? Fine, thank you, sir. We want to go back to work, Inspector. Now, why can't you take it easy for a few days? Because this is important. You remember the girl I told you about who was here this morning? The one who's engaged to Garrison's brother? Yes, sir. After she left here, she hired a dog team. She made a lot of inquiries about the best route to Rainbow Creek. And she drove out of town this afternoon. Alone? Alone. Well, the trail's hard packed. There are road houses where she can stay overnight. If she knows anything about handling a dog... She team, does, sir. She proved she was a good driver before Ray would let her have a team. Evidently learned to handle one during the months she spent on the trail coming from White Pass. I'm not worried about her making Rainbow Creek, but I still want to follow her. Why? Because I think Tom Garrison's brother is there. And I want to talk with him. To be more accurate, I want King to meet him. I don't understand, Sergeant. Well, sir, it may be that we have an innocent man in jail... I'm not sure. It's hardly more than a hunch. But if I'm right, the girl may be in great danger. Now, here are the things we must consider. When the sergeant had finished talking, the inspector gave his consent to the trip, and the sergeant drove out of town the following morning. It was in the late afternoon, three days later, that Sue Devon stopped her team in front of an isolated cabin near the source of Rainbow Creek. The door of the cabin opened, and a man stepped out. A man who, except for the lines of dissipation in his face, was the exact image of Tom Garrison. It was Tom's twin brother, Ted. Sue, honey, what are you doing here? How did you get here? I'll tell you all about it after I get warm. But, honey, you, you can't stay here. There, there are a couple of men staying with me. They aren't here right now, but they'll be coming back soon. I'll tell you what. I'll drive you back to the roadhouse at the mouth of the creek. You'll be more comfortable. Let your guests stay at the roadhouse. They can't. Uh, I mean... I don't care what you mean. I'm going inside. Sue, honey... This isn't your cabin anyway. It belongs to Tom. Where did you get that idea? From Tom. When he lost track of you three months ago, he wrote me that he'd staked a claim on Rainbow Creek and that he was building a cabin. You don't sound like yourself. What are you so mad about? Oh, stop it, Ted. You must realize that I've come here by way of Dawson. You must also realize that I know what Tom has done. What Tom has done? Don't pretend you don't know that he's in jail. In jail? For what? To protect you. In the same way he's been protecting you all his life. Oh, Ted, we both used to excuse the scrapes you used to get in. But this is different to steal, to deliberately shoot a man. You're crazy. I wish I were. I wish I weren't so sure. But it's crystal clear to me. You committed this crime and you came here to hide. You told Tom what you'd done, and to save you from jail or from being a fugitive for the rest of your life, he decided to take your place and give himself up. I didn't want him to do it, Sue. I tried to stop him. How? Did you ever consider of giving yourself up? No. I was ready to take my chances with the law. He wouldn't let me. He did what he did because he wanted you and me to get married, to be happy together. So it's to... my fault. I didn't say that. He sacrificed himself because he loves you and me. Well, well it... here's news for you, Ted. I've always known that Tom loved me. But you were the romantic one. The dashing, devil-may-care hero. And I thought I loved you. Even when you practically jilted me at the altar. It was a full month. A month, a day, what difference? It made no difference to me. I was ready to wait for you all my life. But time has a habit of teaching people common sense. I've learned my lesson. You still love me? No, I don't. And I'm not going to marry you. I came up here to marry Tom. Tom? Have you... Have you told him that? No. I saw him, but I didn't tell him anything. I will, though, as soon as they set him free. He's confessed, hasn't he? It's your turn now, Tom. <laughs> no, thanks, Sue. You mean you'd let him be convicted? Look, Tom's the romantic member of our family. I'm the realist. No confessions for me. You don't really need one. You can save Tom yourself. Just go back to Dawson and tell the Northwest Mounted Tom's innocent and I'm guilty. Send them up here. By the time they arrive, we'll be out of the country. They'll catch you sooner or later, Ted. We'll see. Now, you must leave, Sue, and I mean this minute. Why? Oh, it's too late. They come back. Who? 
Frenchie and Brad. Sue, don't let them guess that I've admitted anything. I'm going to... Well, Ted, we have picked up the gold. Now we... Oh, who is this? Yeah, who's the lady? I said, Sue Devon, boys. Sue and I are old friends. Oh, enchanté, mademoiselle. What's the idea? She just dropped in to say hello. An old friend of yours, huh? That's right. It's getting dark, Sue, if you want to make the roadhouse in time for Wait supper. Wait a minute, we... Ted. How did she know you were here? She didn't. She thought she'd find Tom. As a matter of fact, she's Tom's girl. Then why doesn't she know he's in jail? She's been away. I wasn't going to tell her, you fool. The mademoiselle is afraid, Brad. I've noticed it myself. Come on. Not so fast. You know who we are, miss? Why, friends of Ted. Think you'd remember us if you saw us again? Well, I suppose so. I don't know. Ted says you've been away. Where? To the States, to Seattle. And you passed through Dawson and didn't hear anything about the Crystal Falls robbery. Or about Tom Garrison going to jail. I didn't go through, Doctor. Don't lie. How else could you get there? I think she'd tell many lies. So do I. What do you think Frenchie has in that bag, sister? I don't know. She does not know. After she has heard me say I have the gold. She knows who we are, Ted. She knows all about us. Well, what about it? She stays here. That's what about it. We tie her up and leave her here. Oh, no. She gets no chance to tip off the Mounties where we are. She's leaving this minute. Over my dead body. All right. That's the way you want it? This gun says she's leaving. Why, you... Move. Over to the other side of the room. Now get out of here, Sue. Hurry. All right, kid. Don't move either one of you. Come on, Buck. We're turning around. We're going back to Dawson. Much. Come on. Sergeant Preston had stopped at the roadhouse. The proprietor told him that Sue had headed up the creek, and he started after her through the gathering dusk. King was working as a loose lead, and a mile beyond the roadhouse, he slackened his pace. Although they could not be seen, the great dog knew that another team was approaching them. A moment later, Sue drove her sled around a bend in the trail. Looking! Oh, yes, Hello! Get over to the side! I'm coming through! Oh, it's the girl! Hold up there! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Miss Devon! Sergeant Preston, take him. What's happened? Oh, Sergeant, Tom Garrison didn't have anything to do with that Crystal Falls robbery. The three men who are responsible are up there. Oh? Ted and Frenchie and Brad. They have the gold. They were going to tie me up and leave me in the cabin while they made their getaway. The man you're going to marry was planning to... I'm not going to marry him. But it wasn't Ted. He pulled a gun on the other two. They were the ones who wanted to take me prisoner. It was Ted who got me out of there. Now, you keep right on going till you reach the roadhouse. Stay there until I... What is it, King? Another dog team coming this way. It's Frenchie and Brad. Oh, Sergeant, they must have followed... Ted... What could they have done Rick, to him? Drive your team into the woods. It's the right there. All right. Hurry. Gee, Bucky, gee. <laughs> the girl and her team disappeared in the woods. A moment later, another team rounded the bend. There were two men riding the sled. When they saw the sergeant standing in the middle of the trail, they stopped their team and dove into the cover of the trees. The sergeant dropped to the ground behind a rock at the side of the trail. The outlaws opened fire. Two men. The girl must be right, King. Frenchie and Brad. <laughs> The gunfight continued for ten minutes, the bullets kicking up the snow close to the sergeant and chipping the rock that gave him protection. Then there came a lull. The light was failing when King stood up. Are you gone, boy? Go on, King. I'll follow you. King led the way into the woods. Here it was too dark for the sergeant to see anything, and he had to put all his trust in King. The great dog led him deeper into the woods and then turned to the north. The sergeant could see they were following footprints now. Looks as if they're heading back for the cabin. Easy, boy. <laughs> Suddenly, King stopped. He raised his head high for a moment, and then he turned to the right, leaving the trail of footprints. That's their scent, fella? All right. So they're making a big circle to get back to the cabin, and we're taking a short route to cut them off. Good. Go to it, King. <laughs> Five minutes later, King dropped to the ground and the sergeant followed his example. Both were crouched at the edge of a clearing. At last, they heard a noise in the underbrush and a man stepped into the clearing. A second one followed him. There they are. Good work, King. Put up your hands. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Once more, the outlaws opened fire, but panic spoiled their aim. In rapid succession, the sergeant's bullets struck home. 
Brad's right arm hung useless at his side, and Frenchy was clutching his shoulder. Come on, Bing. The sergeant closed in on his prisoners and marched them back to the trail where he had left Sue. Then they drove up the creek to Tom Garrison's cabin. Looking. Oh, you Oh, no. All right, inside, you two. My arm is going. Ted was lying face down on the floor. Sergeant, they've killed him. He got what was coming to him. Over in the corner there. Sergeant, is he dead? Mm -hmm. No, not yet. Ted. Hello, Sue. Not very smart. Tricked me. Got my gun. Sorry. Couldn't. Both Frenchie and Brad have been arrested, Ted. The sergeant captured. He's right here. Uh, I'm sorry about Crystal Falls, Sergeant. Don't try to talk. <laughs> Not much more to, to say. Take my hand, Sue. Here. Yeah. No loss, Sue. Oh, Ted. You and, and Tommy be happy. It all works out. Uh, better this way. Uh, He's gone. He wasn't really bad. If he was, he redeemed himself. Perhaps he was right that it was better this way. For him, the case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. When the temperature takes a nosedive, remember the idea our friend Jack Frost suggested a few minutes ago. On cold mornings, ask Mom to pop your Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice into the oven. Heat just for a jiffy, then pour on some hot milk and top with fruit. It's simple, and wait till you taste it. Every luscious spoonful of those crisp, tender, king-size grains is mouth-watering delicious, full of swell, nut-like flavor. So get ready for a real breakfast treat. Ask for delicious Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of Dance at Caribou Creek. When I was on a routine patrol at Caribou Creek, I met Judd Sawyer, an ex-convict. I thought Judd was going straight. I didn't suspect that he was planning a robbery and intended to place the blame on a friend of mine. There was plenty of excitement when King and I tried to frustrate Sawyer's plans, plans that included my murder. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember... Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.